how many eggs do you need to get to a normal embryo? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. I'm a fertility doctor. And I talk about your fertility and IVF every single day. One of the points of this channel is so that you can understand your body better. You can take better care of yourself, understand your fertility and your hormones, but you can also be a better advocate as a patient because it's hard to be a patient, especially going through something as personal, as sensitive, as expensive as IVF. And I want you to have all the facts that you need. There was a recent study done looking at how many eggs you need. And I love this study for a few different reasons, but one is because I'm always talking about expectations. And there's a lot of nuance in that, but what I have found so often sitting on the other side of the table and talking to patients is that very often no expectations are set. And then the assumption is that it will obviously work. And IVF doesn't work for everybody. At least one round of IVF doesn't work for everybody. So knowing what you might have to put into a process is helpful in your ability to gauge what it's going to take if you want to do it, if it is worth it to you or just have the appropriate mindset and expectation set. So today we're gonna to go over a paper which is in press in Fertility and Sterility. It's called the minimum number of mature oocytes needed to obtain at least one euploblastocyst according to female age and IVF treatment cycles. This was published June 5th of 2024, so very recent. Before we dive in, Please subscribe and share this channel. Ask any of your IVF questions below because I wanna know how I can help you the most and answer your questions. And I'm so honored to see all of our new subscribers here. When we talk about IVF, one thing to understand is that anytime we talk numbers, we're using studies like this, we're talking about expectations and averages to try to help you understand what the road will be like. But for any given person, you're gonna have your own unique experience. An average by definition means some people do better and some people do worse. So I don't exactly know how you will do, but sometimes when I see that you fall off average, it answers the question of what might be going on. So these are not rules or guidelines. They are just averages to help us set expectations. Also, there's no number that should make you feel like you can't do it if that's the right thing. And I think that's really hard. Clinics will have their own cutoffs for a variety of reasons. Some are very ethical and some are very statistical about their success rates. The truth is you need to understand your own success rate. And I don't like to live in a paternalistic world, meaning if I educate you, I think you're smart enough to make a choice that's right for you with how you wanna use your money, time, and your resources. But for any given person having a baby, this is gonna be, it's gonna work or it's not. So the numbers we have to understand, they are just setting the stage. So when we talk about getting to a euploid blastocyst, euploid means that it is chromosomally normal, has the right number of chromosomes. We're not looking for single gene defects in PGTA. PGTA is pre-implantation genetic testing for aneuploidy. This is also considered genetic screening for embryos. This is looking at do the embryos have the appropriate number of chromosomes? Do they have deletions? Do they have duplications? An abnormal number, like an extra copy of chromosome 13, that would be trisomy 13. If you have a known single gene disorder, like the BRCA mutation or Huntington's disease, or you and your partner are both carriers for cystic fibrosis or spinal muscular atrophy, you can do PGTA testing, but you're also going to do PGTM, which is testing for a monogenetic or a single gene disorder. And that requires development of a probe to be able to detect that very minute abnormality. The genetic testing for embryos is done with only a five to eight cell sample from the placenta. So the embryologist is taking a trophectoderm biopsy, taking that small cell sample, and the DNA is being processed so that you can read it. But you can't go see every little micromutation like you can in adult blood. I get thousands of blood cells, and that's not what we have from an embryo. So this study is looking at getting to a uploid blastocyst. That is check-in point one of the marathon, because a single euploid blastocyst does not always equal a baby. If we look nationally, live birth rates, the rate of holding a baby in your arms from a single euploid blastocyst transfer is about 65%, which is really great considering natural fertility rates are never higher than 20 to 25%. So 65 is kicking it off the charts. And people who've been in the IVF game for a long time, we know this is good. But if you think it's a patient, it's 100. 65 doesn't feel good. So 
understanding that this is just one aspect. This is just getting you a chance at getting to an embryo transfer to get pregnant. Now, success rates, if you have more embryos, are going to be higher. And not that we're going to put them all in at the same time. That's not standard of care anymore. But we're going to give each embryo its own chance for success. It's going to give the surface area of your uterus, you implant that placenta wherever it wants, and really get a good implantation. Cumulatively, after two transfers, the rate of success is 88%. And after three, 95%. So when we're talking about saving up embryos, so embryo banking, going through IVF and genetic testing, how many embryos do you need based on how many kids you want, you're going to hear fertility doctors say two to three euploid embryos for every child you want to have in the future. And this is why some patients will get the eggs from one month and make them into embryos and then go get the eggs from another month before you go and get pregnant. Because this is going to change the course of what your family might look like versus getting pregnant now gestating, giving birth, having to recover at least six months to get those ovaries back down, being done breastfeeding, and then going into another cycle where you'll be older and you're going to have a lower chance of success. So trying to set the road of expectations is important because not every egg is going to fertilize. Not every fertilized egg is going to become an embryo and not every embryo is going to be genetically normal. So what this paper is looking at is a question that everybody is asking. So this is a retrospective study looking at five years of IVF data from Spain. So from 2017 to 2022, this study looked at two different groups. So it was based on age 34 and younger and 35 and older. And if people use donor eggs, they were put into the younger group based on the age of the donor. It was looking at your first IVF cycle, and as long as one mature egg was gotten from egg retrieval, then they were included in the analysis. There were over 2,660 cycles in this study. So there's a few different ways we can look at the data, but let's look at these two charts specifically. So this first one is looking at the percentage of having no normal embryos after going through IVF based on your age. So if you were 35, you have a 20% chance of not having any normal embryos. Even in the young group, there was a 9% chance. So that's still possible, but it's the minority of people. As we look at an older age group, we can see that at 38, that number is now 36% chance. So now a third of people are not going to have any normal embryos. If you're now 39, 42%. If you're now 40, 58%. So we're seeing this huge kind of jump right at this time period, which we know is really critical, which is the difference between 37 and 42 is pretty profound. And looking at 42, now we have a 72% chance that there's no normal embryos. Once you get to 44, 90% chance no normal embryos. And this is why a lot of clinics don't do IVF past age 45, because that probability of getting enough eggs to get to a normal embryo is going to be low. That's not answering the question. That's just saying for one cycle, what's your chance you're not going to have a normal embryo? If we look at this next graph, what we're seeing is the number of eggs that you need in order to get to one euploid embryo based on your age. And so if you're age 35, the mean number of eggs you're going to need is going to be 4.9. So let's say five. So that's pretty reassuring to me. If I, even if I have low ovarian reserve, I can get five eggs, I should have a normal embryo. If I'm 37, then that number is 5.8. So I need six eggs. So I'm still in a decent place, even if I have DOR. Suddenly if I'm 40, it's now 12.2. So I need 12 or 13 eggs. That's higher than most 40-year-olds. So that's why if you walk in the door at 40 and you're average, you're going to need two cycles to get to the normal embryo, to even get to the embryo transfer. But look at this change. 41 is 14.8. So you need 15 eggs. 42 23 x 43, 39.7 X. If you're 43, on average, I'm going to need 40 X. Now, I don't know. Maybe you have a high egg count and you're going to have that many, but very few 43-year-olds are going to have that many eggs. Now, can you do multiple cycles and get there? Maybe, maybe not. It depends on your AMH. But your normal embryo could be in your first cycle, and that's why we often will do one or two or give it a try because this might be your only chance. And if you try to see, well, what's the number of mature eggs you need to at least get a blast that can be biopsied to send off, then it's a little bit easier. So this is what I consider getting a chance to even get the normal. So if you're 35, we need three eggs. If you're 40, we need 3.3. So we'll say four eggs. If you're 42, four eggs. If you're 44, six eggs. 
So we're still making it through the culture. We're still having fertilization. We're still getting to the blastocyst stage throughout our age increase until we get to the over 45 group. And then it's 11 to 12 eggs. So this is just really telling us that embryogenetics is that rate limiting step. And to me, this is validating PGTA testing, especially in this older population. So they made a mathematical model based on the data they have, and it's really beautiful and rainbow colored here. But I think that the take home message here is that there's still hope, even if you have a low ovarian reserve, especially if you're under age 40, as you approach 40 and on, you're really going to need more eggs than you're naturally going to have unless you're above average. And this is just further proof that if you're starting your family later, you want to have more than one kid, we should really have a discussion about embryo baking and your family goals so that we can try to optimize your family size and your chance of success. I'll link the study in the show notes below so that you can take a look at it yourself and ask any questions about IVF along the way. Hope this helped. And as always, you can get more information on the As A Woman podcast or follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD. Thanks, friends.